pray. To our eternal Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this blessed opportunity that you've given us to learn more about you from your word. We pray that the Holy Spirit may instruct us. We pray, our dear Lord, that we may be edified by the end of this discussion. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, all right. So here we go. Early writings, which I'll give volume one. Uh, the fall of Saturn. The fall of Saturn. I'm sure it's one of the topics where when you learn more and try to understand about the being Saturn, especially is for is there are many uh, about Saturn. So that is what we are going to learn here. Uh, so I'm going to read. Saturn was once an honored angel in heaven next to Christ. His countenance, like those of the other angels, was mild and expressive of happiness. His forehead was high and broad, showing great intelligence. His form was perfect. His bearing noble and majestic. But when God said to his son, let us make in our image, Satan was jealous of Jesus. He wished to be consulted concerning the formation of men. And because he was not, he was filled with envy, jealous and hatred. He desired to receive the highest honors in heaven uh, next uh, to God. Uh, let me read the next one, then I'll comment. Until this time, all heaven had been in order, harmon and perfect submission to the government of God. It was the highest sin to rebel against this order and will. All heaven seemed in commotion. And the angels were marshaled in companies, each division with a higher commanding angel at its head. Certain ambitious to exalt himself and unwilling to submit to the authority of Jesus, was insulting against the government of God. Some of the angels sympathized with Satan in his rebellion, and others strongly contended for the honor and wisdom of God in giving authority to his son. There was contention among the angels. Satan and his sympathizers were striving to reform the government of God. They wished to look into his unsearchable wisdom and ascertain his purpose in exalting Jesus and in endowing him with such unlimited power and command. They rebelled against the authority of the Son. All the heavenly hosts were summoned to appear before the Father. To have each case decided, it was they determined that Satan should be expelled from heaven. With all the angels who had joined him in the rebellion, they were, then there was war in heaven. Angels were engaged in the battle. Satan wished to conquer the Son of God and those who were submissive to his will. But the good and true angels prevailed, and Satan with his followers were driven from heaven. Oh, yeah, this is something uh, interesting. Uh, firstly, I'm fascinated by the description uh, of Satan before uh, the fall. One thing that we are getting is that he was like an honored angel. Uh, which means all the angels, they respected him or he was above all these other angels. But of course, on top of him, uh, there was what? A Christ, so which means uh, in hierarchy, then we had God, of course, the Father, uh, the Son, or the God, and then next, Satan came. Uh, so we can see the position that he occupied before what, uh, his fall. But then he was called what uh, Lucifer. Uh, and then it goes on to, to explain a lot of uh, things about what him. Uh, like for example, it's here it says his forehead was high and broad, showing great intelligence. Um, his form was perfect, his bearing noble and majestic. So um, this reminds me, for example, when I read the story uh, of Adam and Eve. Firstly, we have the description of them like a perfect, uh, and we are told that they were very intelligent and a lot of other things. And then we also have here the description of Satan as well, that he was an intelligent being, he was perfect. Um, so in a way, it seems as if 
everything was okay. To me, it seemed as if you were supposed to be satisfied because the description you are being given here is um, it's just excellent in a way. If you are going to try to imagine how he was then, uh, everything about him, it seems to be very excellent. Uh, but uh, the story did not end like that as we uh, read here that then, of course, here we are introduced also to another figure in heaven. Firstly, we certainly then we also have the son of God, that is we have heard of Jesus. But here we are told that Christ or God and his son went into a council and said, let us make men in our image. But that is when Satan became what um, jealous, he was jealous of what of Jesus. So we can see here uh, an element of dissatisfaction, or we can see here that Satan wanted even power, and he wanted to be consulted just like what uh, Jesus. So uh, that's yeah, one other lesson that I'm learning is the issue of discontentment, and also even affects us maybe sometimes because of order. Sometimes there are different uh, positions that we are assigned. And sometimes we, we are so much absorbed in those positions or because of power to such an extent that we uh, will just be like certain we are not satisfied or we don't want maybe someone maybe to be on top of us or someone to be just like a leader. Uh, but this is like um, the story of, 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 a, of an angel who was made in, angel, in heaven, but because of dissatisfaction, because of jealousy, here we are told that a lead to use what are for not only that, but you also find out that yes, then what he really wanted was to be like like Jesus, to be given all the respect and to be consulted. But that was not be because here we have Christ or if the Son was on top of him. And then he went to influence the other angels around him. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's interesting because him, as we see like in the first paragraph, what he really wanted was to be uh, like Jesus and to be consulted. But here it seems as if, as he had to deceive or try to deceive the other angels. He tried to paint God and his government as something which was not uh, okay. But of course his own point was about him being what exalted to the point of what of Jesus, what uh, Christ. And then we also see here, of course, the lesson that we can also extract uh, that even though the devil had uh, something he had plotted and which was not okay, but he, he managed to gather some followers, he managed to convince uh, some other angels. But still, we see also other angels who remained loyal to God. So it's interesting. Sometimes I just wonder why maybe we have people like false prophets, but still they have also followers. But we can see also still here that the devil even in a perfect environment because of his uh, deceptive acts, he managed even to, to lure some angels to, to, to rally behind him. So we can see uh, his work that he began in heaven is still uh, doing now. Yeah, I'm just trying to imagine what was in certainly, but I'm thinking maybe that can also be found in us because of dissatisfaction uh, or because we want to become, because of selfishness, we can also be in this state. So yeah, may God really uh, help us here. Uh, I'll open up for, for comments on these two paragraphs, if there are any. Okay, um, there's a point which is coming up that um, the issue with Satan was not necessarily with the father in person, but with the son, uh, Jesus, whom we call Jesus. So if you can actually see um, when, when, when God... When, when a discussion was being held that let us make men in our image, when God said to the son, Satan was filled with jealous of Jesus. Uh, let's mark that point. Uh, the next one, the next point is, um, I think it's on paragraph, paragraph, uh, 
uh, let's check. Okay, paragraph two, the last line it says, uh, okay, maybe there was contention among the angels. Satan and his sympathizers were striving to reform the government of God. They wish to look into his unsearchable wisdom and ascertain his purpose in exalting Jesus and endowing him with such unlimited power and command. They rebelled against the authority of the son. There are no problems with the father, but with the son. Um, all heaven was for someone to appear before the father to each case, uh, to have each case decided it was they determined that Satan should be expelled from heaven with all the angels who had joined him in rebellion. And there was all in heaven and the story goes. So uh, this, this makes more uh, deeper sense like, why was Satan particularly enraged uh, or envious uh, or filled with hatred towards the sun? Um, actually, the verse line uh, says, Satan was once an honored angel in heaven next to Christ. So we have the Godhead there, and then we have Lucifer, uh, second high, in, uh, we have the Godhead, then we have Lucifer, and then we have all the other angels. Uh, why was such, why was Lucifer uh, such a, an honored angel. At some point, it says that uh, Lucifer was created as near as possible as God himself. So, um, <clears throat> Lucifer, uh, he, he, he was a creature, but created uh, as near as possible as creatures could go near God. So, they could... In the eyes of, of the other angels, it seemed like there was not much of a great difference uh, between Lucifer uh, and, and, and Christ. Uh, so they, they, so Lucifer maybe thought himself to be equal with God. So this God we are talking about, when, the, when we read in Ezekiel, when it says he wanted to be equal with God, he wanted to sit at the uh, throne of the, of the mountains. It is the place of Christ that he wanted to take, uh, the place of Jesus. So we should ever keep this in mind that um, anyone who reflects the image of God, uh, the, the image of Christ becomes a natural enemy of Lucifer, uh, not from, from now, but even from beyond, uh, even from then. So that's, that's, that's my comment. Um, For the uh, for the comments, um, yeah, that's so true. the The issue was about Jesus, and of course, as we know, it didn't end there in heaven. But even up to now, one of the things which is at stake is the divinity of Jesus Christ. That is, people they just want to treat Christ just like an ordinary creature. Or like someone who is just like us. So Satan is just continuing his battle against Jesus Christ. Uh, okay, let me continue. So firstly, we read that there was war uh, in heaven and they were cast out of, of heaven. After Satan and those who fell with him were shut out of heaven. And he realized that he had forever lost all his purity and glory. He repented and wished to be reinstated, reinstated in heaven. He was willing to take his proper place or any position that might be assigned him. But no, heaven must not be placed in jeopardy. Or heaven might be mad should he be taken back. For sin originated with him and the seeds of rebellion were with him. Both he and his followers wept and implored to be taken back into the favor of God. But their sin, their hatred, their envy and jealousy had been so great that God could not blot it out. It must remain to receive its final um, punishment. Uh, okay, I think let's just try to, to reflect and comment on this um, paragraph. Actually, I, I, I remember someone, or oh, I can't remember where I read about it, 
uh, especially when it says here, so yeah, I just want to pause the question. When it says that after certain and those who felt who fell with him were shut out of heaven and really that he had forever lost all his spirit and glory, he repented and he wished to be reinstated in heaven. Uh, so how can we explain it? Is it possible that we someone can repent, but still God uh, does not really answer to the prayer of that person? Uh, or, or what is it that is being uh, explained here? How can you try to reconcile with the point that whoever comes to, to the Lord, the Lord does not want to cast away, and whoever confesses his sins, the Lord is faithful and just what are to forgive and cleanse. Uh, so how do you balance out with this statement where it seems as if the devil repented, the angels repented, uh, or or what is uh, the explanation? How do we answer if someone is going to, to, to answer, to ask this question? I remember someone posed this question, of course it was answered, but I think we can try to, to attend this question. Uh, yes, I'm posing this question. How can we answer this question about the issue of repentance? Can we say the devil repented, but God shut the door? Uh, so does it mean that it's possible that maybe us or someone that may do evil or do like a lot of things that are evil, but then at some point really that, oh, I'm too sinful, let me repent. And then God will say, no, I'll go away. How do we balance this out? Any, any, any thoughts, comments here? Uh, okay, so we cannot read this quotation in isolation. Uh, of other points that have been raised before. So it's not like Lucifer um, was envious of, of God, of Jesus, and then God said, go out. And then after then he realized, ah, I made a mistake, let me come back. Uh, time was given between him, between sin, the seed of sin being mysteriously found in him, uh, and up to the point where they were uh, then driven out of heaven. There was time, a lot of time. We don't know exactly how long, but uh, it was long, long enough uh, for God to realize that no ray of light can convince Lucifer of his guilt that he may repent of it uh, in due time before his probation had closed. So at this point, the probation of Lucifer uh, had closed. So the uh, same applies with men. Um, God gives us time up to such a point uh, where the Holy Spirit is continuously whispering in our ears, but we, we cherish that as long as the more we continue cherishing that sin, uh, we, become, we become hardened to such a point that no ray of light, no, no wooing of the Holy Spirit can bring us uh, back into the realms of God. And at that point, uh, the Spirit of God is withdrawn from us. We would have committed the unpardonable sin. Uh, so the, the unpardonable sin is any sin that we cherish so long to such a point that the Holy Spirit cannot convince us that it is sin. Uh, at such a point, the Holy Spirit is withdrawn and then uh, uh, probation ceases for, for that human, for that, for that person. Now, if, if we then read from, from the previous uh, discussions that we're having, uh, that during when, when the probation shall close for everyone, uh, some we will we, we want to repent. Even Actually, the Bible says uh, some will repent, but it will be too late. Uh, Amos says uh, some will realize that the harvest is passed, but we're not saved. Some will try to repent, but it will be too late. It is the same situation uh, that happened to Lucifer. He, he wanted to repent, but it was too late. Uh, because if we read in, in short, I think it's on the beginning of the paragraph, it says they, rebe they rebelled against the authority of the Son, all heaven was with someone to appear before the Father to have each case decided. So each and every single angel uh, appeared before the Father, before the Father, one on one, and they discussed. And uh, I want to believe that God tried to convince them uh, of of the divinity of Christ. They, God tried to convince them of the authority of the Son, but they rejected uh, the the, the <clears throat> they rejected the love of God. They rejected. They rejected him. 
uh, such to a point that it was then determined that they should be expelled uh, from heaven. Uh, and then they were driven out. So <clears throat> it is not like uh, God then shut them out. No, he gave them a chance for them to repent uh, before they were expelled, but they, 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 they refused. And then this repentance that then come after they were expelled. It is not actually a turning away from sin, but uh, it is more like remorse. They didn't want to face the consequences uh, of the actions they had taken because what is driving them uh, is the reali realizing that they had no possibility of being brought again into favor with God. Uh, they, they, they wanted th those favors. They wanted those benefits of heaven. But the problem is uh, they had committed an unpardonable sin in that they refused the, the appeals of God. Um, because like I said before, the thoughts came in, in Lucifer and he cherished them for a long time. And they started to spread these lies uh, to other angels for a long time uh, before even God uh, then called him and discussed uh, this issue. So I don't know if I've answered it, but that's the whole scenario. It is exactly the same with us today, that God <clears throat> does everything he can uh, to save it, to save us. Uh, like that parable, he says, what did I not do for my vineyard that could have been done, uh, but it bared no fruit. So God did everything he could. Um, uh, and so, so, yeah, I think you can. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. You actually answered it uh, very well. Uh, I think it also relates to the issue of uh, or the story of um, Jacob and Esau, where the Bible also talks about the repentance of what uh, of Esau. That God is not what regarded like as you explained. That is certain is his repentance was not like a sorrow for sin, uh, but he uh, he was regretting or he was going to lose all the favor that he gained what are uh, in heaven and he was going even to lose uh, his place what are uh, in heaven. So because of that, he thought it was better to to ask for to for repentance, but it was not true uh, like repentance like what he said. And at the same time, they had been given enough time to repent, but still they did not what are uh, due to us. So it's also a lesson to us. Uh, that we really need to use the term we have while it's probation uh, is still open so that you may come uh, to the Lord and seek for forgiveness and also to seek the Lord not uh, because we are fearing the consequences of evil, but we should seek the Lord so that uh, we may be saved through our love for, of Jesus Christ. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I don't know, my brother Kenneth, do you have something to say? Uh, this issue or yes Elder William, thank you so much mm. uh i think uh elder pd has elaborated the perspective little well uh, but i have something to add on one will be for me another one will be uh, to answer one of the questions also which has been disturbing us so much surely uh repentance uh may look at it in two aspects. It has the emotional part of it, which we may not maybe see with our our limited uh, capability or knowledge, the grief for sin and the willingness to turn away from it. And it has also the practical part of it, and that is the outcome, the fruits of a true turning away from sin which is reflected in the change of behavior. Now, when you look at the, the cases given, uh, that you've given the case of Esau, I elaborated the case of the angel and the Lucifer himself, you go back and look at the case of Cain. There is a trend similar to all these uh, examples that there is the fear for the consequences, but no turning away from sin. There is no grief for sin and a willingness to let it go. Then when you read the story of redemption, the, an answer which comes to, to, to answer one of also the questions disturbing us <laughs> several times. When look at Lucifer and what developed in him, uh, many of the texts we read, many of the, the literature we have, uh, 
it seems this is a mystery, the mystery uh, of sin. Because many people have always asked, how come that sin originates from or starts is sin is discovered in this creature, which is next to the Trinity, the covering angel. Perhaps many have always even quoted and said that sin originated straight away from the throne of God because this one was a covering angel, <laughs> which I may not take as such, but we shall just cling on to one concept that this is a mystery. How a holy creature in uh, the one actually who is covering up on the throne of God is the one in, 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 uh, in, uh, in whom uh, sin starts to grow and is discovered. Now, it appears in the first place that Lucifer is not also uh, fully understanding what was developing in his mind. And then many have also stood to sympathize and say, ah, Lucifer was innocent because even he himself wasn't sure of what was happening. But the truth is, when we read the story of redemption, he says, once uh, God detected the sin in this creature, the Holy Spirit was summoned to, 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 to talk to Lucifer and to convince him of his erring path. And that, that book, the story of redemption says, for thousands and thousands of years, Lucifer's character did not change the course. And later, the spirit brought the report to the Trinity that the character of the creature had gone beyond redemption. Just simple as Elder Peter had put it. So the probation was given. And if the spirit, just as he does the work in us to convict us of sin and to show us the right path we must take so that we reach full repentance and we adamantly refuse, it is the same case. Now, we may not go deeper beyond that into the issue of whether Lucifer was also waiting to discover what was growing in him would do, produce as fruits later. But the time had been given. And so rebellion just increased and increased and increased over time until the time assigned to him was over. So we need to be very careful in our lives of the sins where we will disguise ourselves uh, thinking that maybe we are not aware of what is happening in our lives. And that kind of self-pity, at the end of it all, we come to Adam and refuse uh, the conviction of the spirit to let go of sin. All sins are taken as fatal before God. Whether for, actually, I think you know, that the concept of quantification of sin lies in the eyes of human beings because they may not be knowing really what sin is. But before God, whether what you consider is small, for God takes sin as sin. For sin is fatal and destructive before him. So we need to be very careful. So Lucifer had time to change and he did not change the course of his actions. Likewise, also the angels. And whenever we develop a sympathizing concept before or for Lucifer's fall, then we are likely to take the same train where we become sympathetic of sin and the very sin we have failed to let go because we still deserve the benefits, the, the bodily benefits we get out of it. But the Lucifer had determined to rebel against the God whatsoever, <laughs> whatsoever the case. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, let's continue with the part.
All right, I think I think I can read. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Next paragraph. Ah, Kennedy, can you share that quotation you were you were referring to? Yeah, I'm going to get it, Tiroda. All right. Uh, mm. You're having problems with internet with your internet, Elder William, right? Are you muted? Sorry, yeah, it's actually dropping off. Ah, okay. So I asked I asked Kennedy to share the quotation where he was referring to when the Holy Spirit was summoned to convince Lucifer. I think you can also you will share it in the chats and then you can share it on, on Facebook like you did the other ones. Okay, so reading on. Um, when Satan became fully con conscious that there was no possibility of being brought again uh, into favor with God, his malice and hatred began to be manifest. He consulted with his angels and a plan was laid to still work against God's government. When Adam and Eve were placed in the beautiful garden, Satan was laying plans to destroy them. In no way could this happy couple be deprived of their happiness if they obeyed God. Satan could not exercise his power upon them unless they should first disobey God and forfeit uh, his favor. Some plan must therefore be devised to lead them to disobedience that they might incur God's frown and be brought under the more direct influence of Satan and his angels. <clears throat> it was decided that Lucifer should assume another form and manifest an interest for men. He must insinuate against God's truthfulness and create doubt whether God did not mean just what he said. Next, he must excite their curiosity and lead them to pry into the unsearchable plans of God, the very sin of which Satan had been guilty, and the reason as to the cause of his restrictions in regard to the tree uh, to the tree of knowledge. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, when Lucifer became fully aware uh, that there was no way that he was going to be uh, taken back in heaven, uh, his probation had closed. He has been he had been cast out of heaven uh, for good. So, he as a citizen of heaven and all the other the other fallen angels as citizens of heaven. At uh, that time, yeah, he had been over. They waited for their uh, for their for their judgment. They waited for their uh, for their punishment. <clears throat> so uh, then, then uh, they they devised. So it says he consulted with these angels, um, and they, they planned to still uh, work against the government of God. Uh, at this point, Adam and Eve had not been created, and then when they were created and placed in the Garden of Eden, uh, they made plans to destroy them. Um, and it was decided that Satan should assume another form uh, of which we it was we see then he came as a as a snake uh, to manifest an interest and he must insinuate against God's truthfulness and create doubt whether God did mean what he had said so um, the greatest thing I, I always I always talk about when I talk to people is uh, to create doubt in the word of God so it's not like complete mistrust but doubt uh, that we should guard against. Does God really mean what he says? Um, do we really believe uh, in the inspired writings? Is it really true um, that indeed the Sabbath is, 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 is Saturday? Um, doubt is, is what is just needed for us uh, to walk away from God. Mm. Great doubt uh, to, to make of none effect um, uh, the word of God. So, um, so it says he must excite their curiosity and lead them to pry into the unsearchable plans of God. Uh, you, you remember when he told them that when you eat, you shall be as wise as God, you shall know uh, between good and evil, uh, trying to insinuate them prying into the unsearchable plans of God, which was the exact very sin uh, that he had been guilty of uh, and the reason to the cause of his restriction. So he knew that if you lead them to act as he did, uh, they will also be restricted uh, in regard to the tree of knowledge. Um, so 
May, uh, I don't know if there, there are any comments. Uh, no comment. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> may, may God help us as we uh, ponder upon these thoughts. Um, okay. Uh, reading on further, uh, the fall of men. All right, uh, Kenneth, did you hear what I said that you should share your quotation in the chat? Yes, I, I had it. I'm looking for it here. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Mm. All right. Um, reading on further, the fall of men. Holy angels often visited the garden and gave instruction to Adam and Eve concerning their employment and also told them <coughs> Concerning the rebellion and the and fall of Satan, the angels warned them of Satan and cautioned them not to separate from each other in their employment, for they might be brought in contact with this fallen foe. The angels also enjoined upon them to follow closely the directions God had given them, for in perfect obedience only would they save. Then this fallen foe could have no power over them. Yes, so... We are seeing here that God, uh, angels are sent to them every time to teach them uh, about the fall of Satan uh, against this fall and that they should never be separated uh, from one another because if, if, if they were separated, uh, Lucifer would gain an advantage to, to attack one of them. Uh, and so that he did. Um, which, uh, which, which, which tells us uh, because they were warning, because they knew uh, the kind of person that Lucifer was, because they also had an encounter with him. Uh, you see, dealing with someone who stood next to God, mm. the only person who can convince him is, is God. The only person who can out, who can out talk him or out reason him, uh, is God Himself. Uh, that's why we need his protection. Uh, the, the worst thing we can ever do is to underestimate our enemy, uh, thinking that we have some strength of our own to overcome him. Um, because a third of the angels didn't. So may God help us to realize the kind of fall we are in and the armor that we should wear and that how we should hide in him who can conquer against this fellow. Um, uh, reading further, it says, Saturn commenced his work with Eve. Saturn commenced his work with Eve to cause her to disobey. She first aided in wandering from her husband, next in lingering around the fruit, around the forbidden tree, and next in listening to the voice of the tempter. So three things. Number one, wandering away from her, uh, from her husband. Two, lingering around the forbidden tree, tree. And three, listening to the voice of the tempter. And even daring to doubt what God had said, number four. So, wandering from my husband, uh, lingering around the forbidden tree, mm. listening to the voice of the tempter, and doubting what God had said. Mm. Uh, so, and even daring to doubt what God had said, in the day that thou eatest thereof, shalt thou surely die. She thought that perhaps the Lord did not mean just what he said, and venturing. She put forth the hand and took of the fruit and ate. It was pleasing to the eye and pleasant to taste. Then she was jealous that God had withheld from them that was really for their good. And she offered the fruit to her husband, thereby tempting him. She related to Adam all that the serpent had said and expressed the ast astonishment that he had the power of speech. Um, you see that that curiosity that the angels said that we should build a curiosity in, in, in men and that she was astonished that the actually the snake could actually speak uh so four things we can learn uh, for, uh from the era of eve number one um she wandered away from her husband in other words she separated herself from a place of safety uh which is moving which can be to us uh like the prodigal son to wander away uh, from the fall to wander away from God. 
And next was lingering around the forbidden tree, uh, bringing ourselves to places where <clears throat> uh, we cannot bear the temptations. Remember, God can only allow the te temptations to come, those that we can conquer. But it does not mean that we can't bring temptations that which we cannot conquer on our own. So if we hide in God's bosoms, he will only allow those that we can conquer. But when we go beyond the protection of God, we place ourselves in positions where we cannot resist temptation, just like what, uh, what Eve did. Uh, when, we, when we find ourselves in places where we should not be, uh, we go to these places of entertainment, uh, either physically or through the television, um, we, we find ourselves in places where we cannot uh, resist temptation. So that's why at some point Jesus says, if your left eye causes you to sin, pluck it off. Uh, for it is better to go to heaven with an eye than to go to hell with both eyes. If your left hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better to go to heaven maimed than to go to hell with two hands. Uh, so he was not advocating for self-mutilation, but he was simply saying, guard the avenues to your heart. Don't place yourselves in places where you cannot resist temptation. Places where angels cannot accompany you, either physically or through digital. And then the next thing was listening to the voice of the tempter, uh, uh, entertaining. I think it's Corinthians which says, do not be deceived for evil communications corrupt good manners. Uh, listening to false teachings uh, and even daring to doubt God. And we begin to doubt uh, the wisdom of God, uh, questioning uh, the wisdom of God. I don't know if there's anyone uh, who, who wants to make a comment. No comment. Any comments? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, all right. Uh, that's okay. I just want to comment. Yeah, thank you for, for what you've said. That is very true. Sometimes uh, the devil has several ways uh, to tempt us or to lead, to lead us into, into sin. Uh, so it is also good to position ourselves uh, uh, and don't need to expose ourselves. Sometimes uh, there are situations that we may create for ourselves that can weaken our ability to resist uh, uh, the evil one. Or if we are going to expose ourselves to certain environments, somehow even our um, decision making is also going to be uh, weakened. So it, also, it is also important as Christians uh, to what oh, he, as we can see, is an act deceiver. Uh, he knows he has been studying human beings. Are you the elder? Internet is arranged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you, we couldn't hear you for the most part, but anyway, um, maybe let's continue reading and finish this part. Um, the other thing is, uh, when she put forth the end and took of the fruit and ate. It was pleasing to the eye and pleasant to taste. Then she was jealous 
that God had withheld from them that was really for their good, and she offered the fruit to her husband. So there are some people who want to present the thought that uh, sin is not enjoyable. Mm. Uh, it, it's wrong. Uh, <laughs> if it wasn't, not so many people would be not so many people would be lost. Mm. Yes, uh, it was really pleasing to the eye and pleasing to the test. It appealed to her. And, and she became jealous that why did God withheld that which is good for, 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 for which is really good for them. Uh, even so, some certain foods that were forbidden, it's not like they don't taste good. Uh, for if you ask those people who eat the, what uh, these forbidden foods, they actually taste be- good. Uh, sometimes they even taste better than the, than the food that we are supposed to eat. So it's not about the taste or the look, but it is about the command a giver. It's about what God has said, not what was said. Um, it, 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 is, it is who said it uh, that we should obey. Uh, so if we take that it is God who said this, then that one should give us fear uh, that it is God who has spoken. Uh, whatever word that he has spoken, but it is God. Uh, so <clears throat> Uh, let us desist from the idea of, of trying to tell people that sin is not a job. It is, uh, but the question is to what end? Um, but to what end? And then it goes on to say, I saw a sadness come over Adam's countenance. He appeared afraid and astonished. So when Eve was presenting this uh, sadness, then uh, came over sudden, uh, or Adam's countenance and he appeared afraid and astonished. A struggle seemed to be going on in his mind. He felt sure that this was the foe against whom they had been warned, and that his wife must die. They must be separated. His love for Eve was strong, and in utter discouragement, he resolved to share a fate. He seized the fruit and quickly ate it. Then Satan exulted. He had rebelled in heaven and had gained sympathizers who loved him and followed him in his rebellion. He had fallen and caused others to fall with him. He had now tempted the men, the women, to, uh, to inquire into his wisdom and to seek to penetrate his all-wise plans. Satan knew that the woman would not f- fall alone. Adam, through his love for Eve, disobeyed the command of God and fell with her. The news of men's fall appeared. So the news of men's fall spread through heaven. Every harp was hushed. The angels cast their crowns from their heads in sorrow. All heaven was in agitation. A council was held to decide what must be done with the guilty pair. The angels feared that they would put forth, the angels feared that they would put forth the hand and eat of the tree of life and became immortal sinners. But God said that he would drive the transgressors from the garden. Angels were immediately commissioned to guard the way to the tree of life. It had been Satan's studied plan that Adam and Eve should disobey God, receive his frown, and then partake of the tree of life that they might live forever in sin and disobedience. And thus sin must sin, and thus sin be immortalized. But holy angels were sent to drive them out of the garden and to bar their way to the tree of life. Each of these mighty angels had in his right hand something which had the appearance of a glittering sword. Then Satan triumphed. He made the others suffer by his fall. He had been shut out of heaven and they out of paradise. Mm. Yeah. Sad story. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, there, there are so many lessons we can learn for, uh, from this. Uh, the, uh, Adam's thoughts, they quickly rest uh, to and fro um because of his love strong love for eve uh, and in other discouragement he, de- he decided to share a fate uh what a foolish decision that was sometimes it was more emotional than out of reason uh, sometimes that's what we do as, as humans actually the most get the reason from a, from, uh, from a reason's point of view 
And then he seized, he quickly seized the fruit and quickly ate it because he knew uh, the fate that was coming. Um, and Satan obviously triumphed. Uh, and his plan was after they had sinned, they should go and eat the tree of life. But the meeting was held in heaven. Uh, that mighty angels, not just angels, mighty angels were quickly sent uh, to the tree of life to guard it, to guard the way to the tree of life and drive these people out of the Garden of Eden, out of the Garden of Eden. Um, yeah. Any comments? Yeah, it is um, a sad story, uh, but at the same time, it, it opens uh, like our eyes um, and it us, it us to understand that the devil's mission is to deceive. The devil's mission is to kill. But Christ came to us to give, life, give us life and life out uh, in our parents. Um, yeah. So we can only say that we are only safe at the mercy of God, at the mercy of Jesus Christ. Uh, that is when we overcome uh, the evil one. Uh, and then there is also another point that I see here. That is uh, from what is here, the devil knew that it was going to tempt Adam, uh, but he chose to go the other way around through uh, the woman, then the woman to, to Adam. So I think it should also be our prayer that the Lord may help us not to be the channels. Uh, through which uh, the devil uh, may weaken the fellow, fellow the of fellow believers, or uh, may not be the channels that the devil uses, the channels that the, the devil uh, uses to uh, other people's Christian spirituality. So just pray for ourselves. Uh, and at the same time, also it's also mindful for us also important for us not to be also influenced by others into, into sin, but it's good to stand on our own and pray that God may guide us, uh, no matter how that person may be close to us or no matter how spiritual that person may be. Everyone is prone to temptation. Everyone is prone to hurt. So we just need to pray that the Lord may, may keep us uh, and trust more uh, in Jesus Christ and trust less uh, in what we can do as, as human beings. Um, yeah, I can see that we are fighting against someone who is skillful and someone who knows what he's doing, but we thank the Lord that with Christ on our side, we is even stronger uh, than the devil and through Christ we can overcome. Amen. Yeah, true. So, yeah, there's a end there. Ah, yes, you can comment. Okay, thank you. Yes, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm just trying to, to think um, what would have happened if, um, if Adam had not eaten of that fruit and uh, only, only Eve had eaten. What would have happened to, to Eve? Um, was her death going to be instant? Or was she going to live? And would Jesus still have to come and die for Eve, um, for only Eve? And would they still be allowed to be uh, a couple as God had ordained that they would be? What would have happened, really? That's my question. Uh, all right. Personally, uh, I don't know what could have uh, happened. Maybe that can be speculation. Uh, I don't know. But what I just know is Christ or God loves us, all of us. I don't know whether God valued Eve more than Adam or Adam more than Eve. But what I just know is Christ uh, values uh, humanity. Uh, but I don't really know what is going to happen. I think maybe other people may 
may help to respond to that question. Um, it's nothing. Give me a few minutes. I'm mm -hmm. trying to search for something, but if I don't find it, then I'll, I'll, I'll comment what I, uh, but in the meantime, Elder, I mean, uh, we, what is, <clears throat> Kennedy, you can say. Yes, yes. Uh, okay, thank you so much. That question is uh, surely interesting and uh, <laughs> tricky also to answer. <laughs> but I will try to answer it this way. Uh, the Bible says that Adam and Eve had been united and they had become one. Now, uh, in being one, uh, the fall away of one uh, could also <laughs> compare the falling away of the other. So someone would think automatically that since these two had been united and they had become one, so there was no way one could, 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 could fall and then the other remains standing. That is one line of thought. <laughs> However, the Bible is clear that a soul that sins is the one that will die. And the one which does not sin uh, will survive. And will, 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 the one which repents will receive eternal, eternal life, will not die, surely. So uh, it's a tricky question to, <laughs> to answer. Uh, but I think God in his wisdom uh, would have figured out a way. That's why I can say. Because uh, it, it would be funny if Eve sinned and then Adam took the penalty of Eve, yet he himself had not made a decision. Because whereas uh, Eve had been taken out of, uh, of Adam, but it was not out of the making of Adam. It was out of the making of God. God had provided Adam's need. The Patriots and Prophet says uh, that uh, Adam could not bear uh, his separation from the only companion which he had amongst all the creatures. But he, Adam had also forgotten that the same power that had provided, that had given him Eve, was still uh, in a position to provide him with another companion. If at all, this one failed. But uh, we, 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 we look at this in a very tricky uh, way to answer it, actually. <laughs> uh, Christ uh, was united with humanity and died, and his death saved the humanity, for he was sinless. Now, when you look at the condition of now Adam and his companion, they were creatures. So one was attached to the other. So I would think that he, if one had sinned, then the other one would fall automatically. However, from the other perspective, that a, a soul that sins is the one which will die. If Eve had sinned alone and Adam would not follow, Adam would have survived and Eve would have bared the consequences of sin and God would, found, would have found a way of dealing with it. But the interesting part of it also, which also leaves us also without a, a definite answer, is before Adam seized the fruit to eat, we do not see any of the consequences of sin. When Eve ate the fruit, the glory of God did not depart from her. Not until Adam ate. And once Adam ate, that's when now we see that the glory that was covering it is to departed. An indication that could be <laughs> the union of these two could not leave one part fallen and the other standing. That's how I can try to answer the question. Yeah. Thank you. Maybe uh, the elders can also continue to elaborate more about it. Well, uh, thank you. I can't. Thank you very much. Personally, you can't give you a, a, a satisfactory answer um, <laughs> now. <laughs> uh, but what we can take home is God had a plan. Whatever that plan was, we don't know because we were never put in that situation. 
where only Eve sinned. So we don't know what could have happened. Uh, but as, as we know, they always, there was always the plan to redeem fallen men, whether that was just Eve or Adam and Eve, and there would have been a plan of salvation. Uh, how that would pan out, uh, we don't necessarily know, but there would have been a plan of salvation for Eve. I don't know. So that's, that's, that's as far as we can, that's what we can safely say. Beyond that, it's all just speculation, unless if there's somewhere which, where it is written exactly what God would have done. Um, for now, I haven't found that. If you have it, maybe you can share. Mm. Um, so thank you uh, for that question. I think tomorrow I will do some research and then maybe tomorrow before we begin, we can okay. try to share some more information with regards to that question because uh, I had a quick rundown and I saw some, some interesting things. Uh, okay. uh, if men had stopped sinning, if Adam and Eve were the only sinners, what would have happened uh, if N and W did not sin? There's mm. something written about that. So, but in the interest of time, uh, let us end here. And then tomorrow, we'll start from there and we'll try to give some more flesh uh, to this idea. Okay. Thank you for that question. I don't know if, if, if that satisfies or builds more curiosity. <laughs> Elda, yes. Uh, uh, as if I had him trying to bring another comment, maybe before you came in. Oh yes. Maybe you can. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I'm a bite. I don't know who that is. Maybe you can introduce yourself. So that you know. Okay. Uh, my name is Amos from uh, Hillbright Church, Mutare. Ah yes. Uh, yes. I, I was just trying to to say thank you to to my brother there for mentioning an interesting fact that the glory, we only see the glory departing uh, only after Adam had seized the fruit. And uh, uh, that, that, that was quite an eye-opener. I'd never really uh, thought about it that we only see the glory departing from the two of them when, when Adam seized the fruit and, and not when, when, it, when Eve um, uh, ate of, the, of, of, that, of that fruit. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. Uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you for, for, for joining us, Brother Amos. Uh, so we end today. Tomorrow we will continue um, <clears throat> from, uh, sorry, tomorrow we'll continue from the plan of, of salvation uh, that will be led by our brother, Brother Kennedy. Yes. So tomorrow so we'll, we'll start from here. So may God bless you all. Let us close our eyes and pray. <clears throat> our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for enlightening us, uh, showing us deeper into the nature of sin and that will give us a deeper sense into the nature of the plan of salvation, the greater risk uh, and the greater love that you showed in redeeming us uh, from this, from sin. May the thoughts of Christ and the sacrifice he made for us continue to ring in our minds so that we may stay in the path of righteousness. Thank you. We want to pray and thank everyone who has joined in today. Uh, may you be with them uh, in whatever place they are, and may they be beacons of light uh, to everyone they come across with. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, brethren. Uh, Bye. Bye. I want to sing by John. Bye. 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 Bye bye, 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 brother Amos. Bye bye. bye, bye, bye. Yes.